Morning. Um, isolation art school continues with a bit of drawing today in the shed. Um, looking at badger skulls today, something we find uh, not infrequently around here. So this is the skull of a badger. When you find a badger skull, they're quite different from a fox skull, which is much thinner on, on the snout there. But a badger skull, often the jaw locks in. It's physically attached. It's kind of robustly joined, so it tends not to fall out. Although the lower jaws often fall into two halves, as with a lot of um, skulls that you might find. Um, uh, so I've cable tied it together for the moment. But don't be afraid to use a bit of super glue to glue them back together. Often the teeth fall out, especially when you've washed them. So you might well need to glue them back together slightly. But a badge is very recognisable, very solid. Um, you know, it's got this ridge on the top of the skull here. Uh, and that secures the big jaw muscles for the jaw. A very strong, powerful head. This one's lost its upper canine, well, all of its upper teeth. Uh, often when you find skulls out and about on walks and things, you know, they're not in a perfect condition. These have lived a full life and some of them have got very poor dentition and they've died of old age maybe, or they've been chewed by other badgers. Um, most of my other skulls are locked in college um, at the moment um, because they are isolated in their own way and I can't get back to them. But um, the ones I've got here, this was donated to me by a friend who works on a farm who found it in a ditch early in the year. Um, so uh, we're going to draw this with ink. So using ink dip pens. So dip pens, um, you can buy them online. They're, they're not expensive, very old fashioned in many ways. Um, and I've got a collection of them as you'd expect. And then you can use ink. It's nice to use proper Indian ink or water fast ink. This acrylic ink isn't as water fast as I would like. So it tended to bleed a bit today when I was demonstrating, but um, I shall show you on the film. Okay, thank you very much. So when I'm drawing with ink, I tend to draw very um, kind of quite fast and lightly to begin with to establish the shape. So I'm trying to just get the outline and the main structures in place and kind of show where the jaw and the eye socket go. The eye socket, you can see at the front or in the middle of the head there, it's smaller than the fox's eye socket. They've got smaller eyes. Um, many of the structures are similar to a fox, but there are kind of key differences. The badger only has four teeth behind the canines, where the fox has six teeth on either side behind the canines. They both have six incisors at the front, two big canine teeth uh, in the upper you know, lower jaws, but uh, the teeth, as I say, are often missing. Um, and the jaw doesn't come out, unlike a fox's, so it doesn't dislocate easily on, on a badger. It stays in place. You can see here I'm using shading to uh, highlight how the jaw bone sits with some shadow behind it in front of the upper part of the skull. I'm clarifying the outlines now that I know, uh, you know where the edges are and that I'm happy with the proportions of the drawing. I'm using hatching, so I'm, you know, lots of little lines to kind of drop in shading and show the curvature of the back of the skull, the cranium there. You can see me now dropping a bit of shading into the eye socket. Um, then on the snout, which of course is much kind of sturdier and more robust than a fox's snout, for instance, um, on the snout of the badger, all of the bones are fused together. There are no suture lines like on a fox. You know, they're not separate bones. Um, it's very solid. They're all joined together. Um, you can see the jaw there. The teeth um, in the badger, as I say, um, you know, are multi-purpose teeth. They're, um, you know, for hunting some things. Obviously, they're catching earthworms and other animals to squish up. But pretty much they'll eat anything, really, badgers. So their teeth are flat at the back for squishing up food. Um, and canines at the front for grabbing things they might want to eat um, uh, or catching things even like baby rabbits for instance and um, so you know badgers are very multi-purpose in their kind of the structures of their jaw and their and their head in general you can see the big sagittal crest on the top of the skull that's the crest that runs along the back much more pronounced than on a fox although they both have them and that big crest on the top of the skull supports the jaw muscles uh, anchors them to give them real strength so it can squash things and chew things up but you can see me adding some shading here and some depth and building up layers of ink hatching and just clarifying the lines uh, so that's the kind of key things for that drawing um, just last little details. I rather ambitiously suddenly decided to add some water to this, which normally would be fine, but actually the ink wasn't very water fast, so it bled quite a lot. I lost some of the detail, so I regret it, really. But there we go. You can't go back once you've decided to do something. Um, but it does give you some more tonal variation. There's a bit of coffee mixed in with uh, the ink um, because I didn't have any water. Actually, coffee adds a nice kind of brown tone to it as well. It gives it a bit of age. Um, just highlighting a few details. When it's dry, you can obviously go back in and clarify some of the blacks as well, bring out those dark marks if you want to.